All right, guys, I'm going to share something with y'all real fast. People keep asking me about this, I'm, so I'm going to show you. Let me move my rod here. Um, they asked me how I've got my live scope set up. This pole is from Fishing Specialties, okay? You can see it's got a cup on it here. Right, it's got a V-cup. That V-cup goes in this holder right here. All right, you can see the way it's made. It'll, it'll go right down in here. Bam. It's got a lock here if you want to use a lock. The screws here are plastic, so if you hit something hard enough, they'll break off. I hear a lot of guys say they only put three screws or two screws in it. I've had this on here a year and a half, and I've had no trouble. I got And what I've done, i got it on both sides, okay? So I can switch back and forth, all right? I'll show you that more. Let me, let me get over here a little further. I'm on my knees, guys. See here? i got another holder over here. That way, if the wind's blowing, to say the wind's coming the way we are now, we're facing the wind now, that's what the boat's doing. So if the wind's over here and the brush piles on this side, I don't have to turn this hand around backwards. I just pull, pull it to this side because my transducer cable's coming out of my footwell, all right? Power's coming through the floor. My fuse box for the death finder's right here. Now I'm gonna show you how I power the black box. For the live scope, you gotta have this black box. Bam, right there it is, hiding right there. I got it mounted to a big piece of plywood. I made a battery box and I got a lithium decoder battery right here. This is a 12, 18 amp hour. They say that the 32 amp hour will run a weekend or more, that black box, okay? So, they, I couldn't get a 32, guys. Every time I watched and watched and watched, I got tired of uh, watching and waiting for one. I've been doing it for like six months. Every time I go on, they're out. I reckon I could have got on the waiting list, but I, what I finally done is I went on there and they had the 18s and I ordered it. I fish all day with that 18. I've never had a problem, okay? She's hooked up now. She's ready to go. What that does is gave me a little bit better picture, okay? Uh, actually, uh, thank the good Lord, the uh, the ghost tree, I hadn't had the ghost tree uh, as bad. If it is, it's very lightly. I don't know if that's what that's helped me or not. Uh, I've been getting a better picture. Then we're going to cut the death finder on. I got the death finder. That's on an 18-inch uh, stand to get up high enough. So when I'm standing up here, it's not that far from me. And also, y'all y'all see me doing the live scope shots. I do it with this tripod, okay? Also, I can set this little tripod right there. I got a sandbag on it to keep it from falling in the water. Believe me, I need it when the traffic gets bad on the lake, bounces. That way I can catch the, the live scope. I can get the live scope the right angle, the death finder I mean, and I can get y'all a, a, a live scope shot, okay? Now, all I gotta do here is hit live scope. There you go, bam. Now, this live scope, let me add to that. Here, here's how I look around. If I wanna look whatever way this handle's pointing, this is how I look. If I see fish in open water, you see me here fish in open water, if I point it like that, I cast down the handle. It gives me a, gives me a, a, a aiming point, all right? A death fi uh, the death finder, guys, you gotta change all the time. I hear people talking about that. You need this, like right now, my, that's my bottom. You need to bring it down like that. Now, right there, look, look at the fish right there. There's a fish, Here, right here's a fish. I don't know what they are. I'm gonna guess they're bass. There's a couple right there. I'm out here in open water, they could be crappy. Right there's a fish at 20 foot. And I, I'd have to check them out. Now, you can go the length. I can go, I'm at the 40 foot. I can go out here further. So now I'm looking 50 feet around, okay? See, there goes some fish right, 45 feet, there's a fish. See there? All right? And that's what you gotta do, you gotta constantly. Now, Mike, see this fuzz? I can take that out. Let's cut the, there you go. Cut the gain back a little bit. As you go from deep to shallow water, you got just a fish on the bottom right there. See him right there? I'm gonna guess that's a bass. <clears throat> Excuse me guys, still a little bit of pollen. Alright? But you constantly, somebody asked me this one time. They said, uh, is it plug and play? No, live scope is not plug and play. A live scope, you go watch the Garmin video they put out about the live scope. The guy on there has explained it. He says, constantly, the word he used. You constantly got to be adjusting it. That's a good way to put it. As you go from shallow to deep water, you got to stop and change it. You go into shallow water, you got to stop and change it. You got to add sensitivity, take it away. I like to run my forward range, that's what they call that. I like to run it usually at 40 feet. Hit the wrong button. I love the touch button, but if you, <laughs> you hit the wrong button, <clears throat> if you mess that button when you hit it, it you change other things. But uh, I like to run mine by 40, 45 feet. See, there's three fish right there at 40 feet. Now, I can tell you by the size of them, they're not crappy. 
They're at 25 feet. They're heading toward the bottom right now, all three of them are. They're bass, and they're roaming around looking for something to eat. Now they're going to the left pretty fast. You learn to watch the body language, and you know which fish you are. Somebody asked me that the other day. That's what, that's what it's all about. All right, guys, that's my setup. Somebody asked me to make this video. I said, well, okay. Uh, I had an old hole made pole before. Somebody asked me to make that, and I said, no, I'm not doing it. And they said, why? I made it from plastic pipe and stuff, and the guys, it worked, and that was it. This is so much better. I can pick it up when I'm ready to move to one spot like that. I had to fold it down. I had it on small uh, ram mounts. I had to tw twist them, fold them, spin it around. This, I just pick it up and lay it down, hit pause. When you're ready to move somewhere, right here, pause. I hit the pause button. See, stops it. I just pick this up. I lay it down like that. I'm ready to go to the next spot. I got a, I got a rod holder uh, right there, strap. I can strap it down, I go on the next spot. Get the next spot, get where I'm gonna fish again, stop, put this back in the water, go back over here, hit pause again, I'm ready. There you go, bam, she's back working again. That's why I like this one. Now this is an area of $300. It's like, you probably get it under $300 if you don't get both mounts. So I got little pedestals, you buy them at different heights right here. You buy them at different heights. You can buy them that hook to the side of your boat, Go on his page, okay? Fishing specialties, if you're interested. He has he has uh, mounts for special boats. He has mounts for, for a different boat to say. Mounts made for tracker. Mounts made for ranger, whatever. And he has this way, a pedestal. This is called a pedestal. These come in different lengths. I measure mine and, and kind of guess what length I want. I want this barely messed the boat. So you have to go on there, measure your boat around, your height, and go on there and see what you, see what you need, guys, what you got to do. All right, guys, appreciate you. Thank you all for watching.